it's another live stream. Mm. Hey everyone. Let me know where you're from in the chat. I love starting the stream like this to see where you guys are all from. I'm from Sydney, Australia. <laughs> California, UK, Italy. What's happening? We're gonna be selecting some photos from a photo shoot I did recently. Um, I was gonna do this during the week, but I figured I've kind of felt like doing a live stream. So here we are. Whoa, Sweden, South Africa, San Francisco, Texas, New York, India, France, Wisconsin, Canada. You guys are from everywhere. Poland. Singapore, Queensland. Yay, welcome. <laughs> Evie is stuck in the office with us today, so she might cause some havoc <laughs> while we're live streaming. She's like chewing on something over there, I don't know. And Dan will join us today as well. Honduras, China, Greece, Hungary, Argentina. Wow, so awesome. All right, I need to post the link to the live stream on my Instagram and on Twitter as well. How do I get the link? On my page, probably. I'll show you guys a little preview of what we'll be um, going through today. So this is a photo shoot I did uh, last week, I think it was last week, with this model, Linnea, who was absolutely amazing. She was so much fun to work with and we took like a billion photos. So yeah, we'll be going through like all these photos and you guys will get to see like what my raw photos from a photo shoot looks like. You'll get to see how many out of focus photos I get and like what my photos look like straight out of the camera as well. Since I normally include just the edited photos in my behind the scene videos. So yeah, I've got like nothing to hide with my photo shoots. So hopefully you guys enjoy looking at this kind of stuff. How do you manage to select all those photos? I basically just go through them one by one. Um, I like to use this program that is open at the moment called Photo Mechanic because it's really, really fast to go through raw files. Like you'll see once we get started that there's like basically no lag when you press next, next, next. Um, yeah, so that program is really easy to use. I find that I used to select using Adobe Bridge, which was really slow and I've attempted to select a couple of times in Lightroom too, but that's even slower than Bridge. I found that Photo Mechanic is like the fastest program to use. All right, posted on my Instagram. Uploading. <laughs> Last time we did a live stream, I went to share it on Instagram and it uploaded when we finished the live stream like three hours later. I was like, great. <laughs> Hi from Tokyo. I really want to go and visit Tokyo. Dan and I were there for like a quick layover. Um, and we got to, we went to Shibuya Crossing, which was amazing. We were there for like eight hours only though. I really want to go back. <clears throat> What's, <clears throat> losing my voice. What site or cloud do you use to give final pictures to clients? Um, for my fashion work, I use Dropbox to upload the high resolution images and share them with the whole team that was part of the shoot. And for my weddings, I like to use what's it called Pixie Set um, because you can upload like an entire wedding and it's got this really beautiful layout that fills up your entire screen. So I feel like it's nice for the clients to be able to scroll through that. Um, and for weddings, I also give it all the photos on a USB as well. OK, 
again. I posted the link to Twitter. I'm drinking some tea. It's like 10.30 p.m. <clears throat> um, but yeah, feel free to like ask me anything you want throughout the live stream. I'll try and answer as many questions as I can. Are you guys excited about the new Nikon release? The Z7? Z6? Z6? <laughs> Five thirty AM. Why are you up so early? <clears throat> Thanks for joining us though on the on the stream. Yeah, it works. Sorry, I'm talking to Dan, I'm not talking to myself. He's like just out of the camera here. Did it work? Yeah. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Can you turn up the gain on your mic? Volume is on a hundred. Turning it up. Dan's turning it up. He's the audio engineer. Yeah, no worries. I really love Pixie set. It's nice. And it's also free up to a certain amount. So I generally, you can, um, if you pay, upload like all the high resolution images for your wedding client and then they can download it. But since I send them a USB with all the high res images, I upload all the low res ones on Pixie Set instead. Um, yeah, just to save a bit of money. <laughs> I was disappointed about the Nikon Z67. I feel like, like the, the specs of the camera seem really good, but I'm really disappointed that it only has one card slot. I feel like no professionals are really gonna move over going back to one card slot. Like I would never ever shoot like anything with a single card slot. I'd, since we have that kind of technology available, I would much prefer to have my photos just be instantly backed up while I'm shooting. Um, I actually get a lot of questions sometimes uh, <laughs> because I say I won't shoot with dual, not dual card slots. Um, if any of my cards have ever um, corrupted, I'm really luckily, I'm really lucky. Wow, I'm doing great at talking today. Um, I'm really lucky that none of my cards have ever corrupted, but I have had uh, like particular photos get corrupted before while I'm shooting. And luckily having a second card, the photo was fine on the other cards, so I could download that and use it. Um, but yeah, I shoot a lot, so <clears throat> I'd rather be safe than sorry, I think. I need more lessons of retouching. Yeah, I've got um, a pretty detailed video on frequency separation retouching on my YouTube channel, but I really wanna make an updated version of that because I think I recorded it like a few months ago, like around the beginning of the year. So I wanna do a new, a new version of retouching. The one card slot thing is scandalous. I know I agree. I just feel like, I don't know, like why would they do that? Surely like, they know how important that is to photographers. It's really weird to be like, oh, nah, it'll be all right. We'll just do one card slot. Like, I don't really understand. <laughs> do you like the 5D Mark IV? Yeah, I do. It's really nice, a really nice camera. Hey Anita, how's it going? I'm eagerly awaiting for you to come to Australia. <laughs> mm, I haven't tried the 6D Mark II, but again, that also only has a single card slot, but I would like to try a few other, like more beginner, uh, Canon DSLRs to make videos about it and show you guys like what the photos could look like and stuff because I know not everyone's going to go for a Canon 5D Mark 3 or 4. Um, yeah, something I'm working on for sure. Or 
all reviews are disappointing. Yeah, <laughs> it's a shame. But I mean, I feel like it's still a really good movement for the whole mirrorless camera thing because now having Nikon having been released a mirrorless camera, I feel like that's going to push Sony even more to do bigger and better things. Um, and hopefully the same thing will happen when Canon releases their pro mirrorless too. How do you find models when you're a beginner for TFP shoots, for example? Back in the day, I used to have an account on Model Mayhem. <laughs> I don't think that's around anymore. And if it is, I don't know if it's any good. Um, but that's how I use the how I I can't talk today. <laughs> um, that's how I found uh, a few models to work with when I first started. I think now there's actually um, a few Facebook groups for like kind of creatives, like photographers, makeup artists, models and stuff like that. I know there's a really good one for Melbourne in Australia, but if you have a look at groups, you can usually post that you're looking for a model and a few people will like comment and say if they're available or if they want to work with you as well. So I find that that, that would be a good place to start. And then once you start putting together your portfolio, um, I would recommend to definitely get in contact with some modeling agencies. Do you still use your Mark III? Yeah, I do. Because I only have one Mark IV and I shoot with two camera bodies when I'm shooting weddings. So one of them's a Mark III and one's a Mark IV. <laughs> Are you going to come in? Soon. Now. Come. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> I'm doing a mad <clears throat> Sony a7 III or Sony a7R III? For me personally, the a7 III is enough. I don't need um, the extra like resolution and stuff for the type of photography that I do. I feel like the a7 III R is great if you print your images or if you do landscape, landscape. photography. He's uh, here! The <laughs> person we've all been waiting for. I've been here the whole time. <laughs> this is Dan, everyone, just in case. I'm not I'm sure you do. <laughs> anyone got us mixed up. We want Dan. <clears throat> Did you? Sorry, I keep clearing my throat. I'm drinking tea. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll stop. Doesn't seem to be working. No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever work in Italy? No, we've never done work there, but we did get to go and visit for a week, and it was amazing. Mm. It was during the was heat it wave. the Diablo heat wave. <laughs> Mate, that was hot while we were it's there. It's like it's as hot as Australia. I think it was even a bit hotter. Uh, it depends where you are in Australia. <laughs> Do you know we bought ice cream one day because we were like, "Oh, this will cool us down." <laughs> like the person like literally passed us the ice cream and it was just melting. <laughs> <laughs> it was so hot. I'm asking an advice on 5D Mark II. I want to buy the Mark II. Pretty much all the 5D bodies are really good cameras. They're all full frame. Yeah, they're all really good. Um, the only things to note with the Mark II is that it's got one card slot, which mm -hmm. was a no-no no from me. <laughs> and it's CF. Uh, yeah, CF only. And also... Buffer's a bit slow. Yeah. Buffer's not as great. And then also there's not as many focus points. So if you like to shoot with like an 85mm 1.2 at f1.2, then it is kind of tricky to get like a good sharp photo because you have to like focus and recompose. Um, but aside from that, I used the 5D Mark II for like three, couple of years. Yeah, two, three years. And yeah, it was Isn't amazing. Isn't the shutter cut on that one like 300,000 or something? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, they also last a really long time. It's still kicking. You both have the best accents. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Having never done portrait photography, where's the best, best place to start? Um, I would probably um well i did ask my siblings my sister and my friends if i could take photos of them just to like practice um i think i did that for like a few years like i take photos of my high school friends and my sister and i would take self portraits as well <clears throat> i can't stop it's like a nervous twitch now drink your tea <laughs> What do you think about the Tamron 28 to 75 2.8 Mark III? Mm. Would have been amazing if that's the one I'm thinking of. For would have been amazing for video, right? Mm. So 
fast full frame 28 to 75 built-in stabilizer I'm pretty sure except it's through by wire the lens ring on it so it's not an actual reel you don't have manual override properly it's electronic so there's a, it's like your 85 uh, on too. yeah so you can't full focus on it properly fine good for photo kind of screwed it up for video mm. I've never tried it for photo I'm actually I I don't know if you guys all like watch my videos on my channel but I use prime lenses like 99% of the time like 100% of the time <laughs> <laughs> like where's this other 1% what your phone still uh, prime still prime I still zoom still prime. but I zoom in it's digital zoom but you crop, I zoom on my you phone crop prime photos yeah. we're gonna get that complicated um but yeah <laughs> where was I going with that I don't even know Oh yeah, where I was going with that is that <laughs> <laughs> I do want to start doing some more photo shoots on some zoom lenses, including the Sigma that you have, 20, uh, 24 to... 18 to 35. <laughs> What's it even close? Not even close. But I want to do a shoot on that lens, even though it's for like a crop frame camera, but we'll just put like the Sony a7 III on crop frame and use it for a mm -hmm. photo shoot would be good. People are asking about gear and here I am shooting only with my iPhone. <laughs> well, oh, I feel yeah. like, yeah, the best camera is the one that you have on you. So mm -hmm. that's cheesy as hell, but it's true. Um, oh, and also I want to tell you guys that I've started to do, I've started to take phone photos at all the photo shoots that we've been doing, which I'll start including in my behind the scene videos, just to show you that you don't need like a fancy camera to take nice pictures. But yeah, I've been getting some cool photos of my iPhone, which has been fun. And like kind of weird, <laughs> like I'm mean, like shooting the model with like my professional camera. And then like towards the end of the shoot, I'm like, oh, can I get some photos on my phone too? <laughs> but everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> so that's been fun. Are you the same young lady that travels with Fully Raw Christina? Your work is amazing. How old when you, were you when you discovered your love for photography? Oh, thank you. And yeah, I did. Um, I used to travel with Fully Raw Christina like a couple of years ago. We went to a few countries together, which was really fun. And I got to take like a million photos a day, which was awesome. And I think I was like, I think I was about 17 when I discovered that I loved photography. So I was in high school and would come home from school every single day and walk down to the fields that were near my house and take self portraits and photos of my sister and photos of the birds and the trees and like the lake and all that stuff that was around there like every day <laughs> going to sunrise yoga after watching you have fun can you tell us what's the importance of hoods like lens hoods no hoods is in oh hoodies. you want to see this hood this is, is the, very um, yeah this this hood's important this hood's very important it's got ears on it <laughs> this Yay. one's good but lens hoods um <laughs> throw the them end. out <laughs> so i okay so lens hoods are used when you're shooting uh backlit to the sun with natural light on an angle yeah on an angle and you use a lens hood so you don't get any lens flare in your photos so, for example, like it wouldn't work here because I'm directly backlit on that. Yeah, so the sun's like pointing straight into my lens, so it wouldn't work. But if I was a little bit more to the side and I had a lens hood, you wouldn't be able to see like these lens flares and all that stuff. So, yeah, that's what it's for. Except for the 35, as we've proven. Yeah, the, the new Canon 35 1.4 Mark II, that lens hood does nothing. We've like. Yeah, I don't know. It frustrates me a lot. And I hate this lens flare that comes out of it. It's so uh, annoying. Because like, most of the time, a lens, like the other time a lens would work, say you're shooting midday, harsh sun <laughs> above you, mm -hmm. you'll lose some contrast. Yeah, so yeah, lens hood would add a little bit more contrast. Yeah, so to or bring the back, glare that's coming it. over the front element of your glass mm -hmm. if you're shooting with a UV filter. Um, but other than that, they're kind of pointless. Unless you bump into things. 
<laughs> like when you're doing like close up shots. I've definitely bumped into sticks before when doing like close up shots of things. Um, how do you happy shoot weddings with just prime lenses? Our lighting in the UK means I shoot with a 24 to 70 and a 70 to 200 um, with a flash gun. I'm too scared to only use my primes. Um, so I like to shoot with two camera bodies on me at all times and they each have a varying prime lens. So for example, I've got the 35 mil on my right hand side and then I've got my 85 on the other camera or maybe like the 135 and the 50, like there's always two prime lenses on each of my cameras and I use the hold fast money maker strap so I can have them like kind of hanging on my hips. Maybe I should select some photos while we're talking. <laughs> and all my camera settings are up here on the top if you guys want to check it out. What's up? Let's select. I think, yeah, I did this whole shoot with the 35 millimeter lens. But yeah, my whole like selection process is pretty much, so these are all the raw files dumped into one folder and I sort them by time created. And then I like to go through one by one and one star the ones that I like. So I'm basically looking for photos that are sharp, first of all and that have like a nice expression from the model and then that are also interesting and have nice composition as well. How many photos did you shoot? Um, I will tell you. 843. It's digital. I like to fire away <laughs> while we're shooting. Hey, if you're not paying six bucks per roll, yeah, it's fine. You're just paying hard drive space. Do you use flash only when I'm shooting weddings? I use flash um, when I'm taking photos on the dance floor because I feel like natural light like you don't really capture like that moment when someone's dancing um but aside from that with my fashion shoots i like to use natural light um i used to do a lot of work in the studio but i don't do that anymore i was thinking of doing like a studio shoot um for a youtube video i think would be fun Do you ever use Dan as your model? Yeah, I do. <laughs> He's always my lighting test. And we also take photos of each other while we're traveling too. I have a fast zoom lens, but I find it quite heavy. So should I swap to multiple primes? Um, well, that's what I do <laughs> because for all the focal lengths that I have, realistically, in terms of primes, I would have to have the 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200. Mm -hmm. And then because I shoot weddings and client work and stuff like that, I can't just have that one lens only. I need to have a backup for that as well. So for the- Yeah, it'd be 24 to 70, what do you do? Yeah. So if I had the 24 to 70, I'd have like a 35 mil as a backup and the 70 to 200, I'd have like an 85 or 100 or 135 as the backup. So like, I feel like, yeah, it like all adds up in the end in your camera bag. Yeah. And yeah, in terms of like actually shooting as well, having a prime lens, I think is lighter, depending like what lens you go for. But yeah, something like the 50mm 1.4 is like so tiny and so light and pretty high quality for like the cheap lens that it is. It doesn't weigh anything really. Yeah. In that point, it's all body, no lens. Mm -hmm. 
I used to love the days where I only shot in the 51.4. Things were so easy. Same as if you, um, if you don't need a fast lens mm. um, with a wide aperture, then you've got, like, what, the 40 to 0.8 pancake and mm -hmm. a few other pancakes which weigh nothing? Yeah. Like, yeah, d I guess it also... Primes that weigh nothing if weight is a problem. Mm -hmm. It also depends, like, what you shoot and stuff like that as well. Um... Do you use single point AF? I also shoot with a Canon 5D3 and Sony eye autofocus spo spoils me a bit. <laughs> yeah, I do use a single point and I move it around like closest to the model's eyes or to their face. I think I've been doing it for so long that it's really just second nature. Like, I, I don't know. It's just, yeah. yeah. And I actually, using the Sony, I find it, like I forget that there is eye autofocus. And I just you still end up using the touchscreen to just yeah, tap yeah. where your focus point I just, is going. I need to get used to it. I also really want to get like a proper Sony lens as well because I feel like that would make a big difference. Do you want to read out some questions? Sure. I'll select. Oh, my thing isn't selected. Yeah. Um, We shot these photos, it was like one single tree on the side of the road. <laughs> it kind of looks like a park, but in these landscape photos, you can see like the cars in the background. <clears throat> what is with my voice? It wasn't a live shot before. No, it is. There we go. <clears throat> Some water. I drink like three of these a day. Color on A7 Mark III isn't quite as good as Canon, but other than that, why don't you use Sony for everything? Why don't you use Sony for everything? <clears throat> I think I want a Sony lens. You know, it really scarred me that day that we did the photo shoot on the Sony A7 III with the 51.2. That video is up <laughs> on my channel, but you don't know how much that affected me. Oh my gosh. It just, that because it was 50. like pissed you off that day. It really did. I was like, in a, I don't know, I was like, oh, it was terrible, the shit was horrible. And Dan was like, no, it's not. The photos are nice. Like, the photos were nice. The I do like them fine. in hindsight, but... <clears throat> the 50 just wouldn't focus. Yeah, it was, just, it was just... It was completely backlit. The background was busy, because it was all just, like, a whole entire tree of leaves. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, like it just so... kept slipping off the face Con and cause you like eye focus was screwing up mm -hmm. because you've got practically, you know, a thousand eye things focus, that look like, like eyes behind the models. Auto face. focus in general wasn't working. Like I had to manual focus some shots during that shoot, but basically we were shooting in a park and it was late in the afternoon. So we had really bright, like beautiful golden hour coming in and you know me, I like to shoot backlit photos. So the Sony was like really struggling. Well, not the Sony, the, the adapter with the Canon lens on the Sony was really struggling to focus during that time. So yeah, I really want a Sony lens and then I'll probably use the Sony a lot more often. How long does it take you usually to cull? <clears throat> If I don't procrastinate. <laughs> if you're not streaming. I could probably cull this in like half an hour. Oh, uh, no, quicker. Eight hundred pictures. Yeah, like the first process of the culling. If you, from when you sit down to when you get to the last photo of the thing. Yeah. How long? Like half an hour. No, I think quicker. Half an hour. I've seen you do it quicker. They asked me, not you. <laughs> <laughs> half an hour. <laughs> Oh, it's adding procrastination or streaming and it's like three and hours. Evie as well coming in and like she was like knocking over all our film up there earlier oh and she's got this new thing she's obsessed with eating all the polaroids that are up there yeah, and she just like some missing <laughs> grabs them all oh it's mirrored <laughs> See, and choose them missing polaroids <laughs> do 
Cześć from Poland. Sorry if I said Be that horribly. Um, how do you find editing photos between Canon and Sony? Do you follow a different workflow for Sony? Mm -mm. I don't do anything different, honestly. Same old, same old. Mm -hmm. I just uploaded a, a workflow editing a Sony photo on my YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much, I do exactly the same thing that I do on Canon. I don't know. I don't find that Sony has like super different skin tones or anything to Canon. It's kind of funny because like <clears throat> all the videos on our channel are filmed on Sony, but no one's ever mentioned anything about the colors looking Not weird. A single beep. So I don't know. That's a bit fishy. <laughs> I know that you ignore my question, so I'm leaving your channel. What was the question? Yeah, what was the Our question? Our chat wasn't on live before, so we've probably <gasps> missed a bunch. I no. only switched it a few minutes ago because it was only Sorry. on top, I don't know why. Because like nothing was refreshing for a while. Oh. Do you use, do you only use Bridge or do you also use Lightroom catalog system? Um, I use Lightroom just to edit my photos. So I make a separate catalog for each of my photo shoots. And then I do like file management and stuff using Finder. I don't like using any um, like programs to do my file management for me. Do you use Camera Raw or Lightroom? I use Lightroom for photo shoots and I use Camera Raw if I'm editing like a one-off picture and I don't want to make a whole catalog for like one or two pictures. I refurbish <laughs> cameras Sorry. reliable. I don't know. You can answer that. I don't know. I've never had a refurbished camera. Hmm. I guess it if depends, like, how and why it was refurbished, in, I think. Because I know... Refurbished camera, as in, like, a Canon that's gotten sent off to Canon fixed and back for sale again, or...? What sort of refurbished? I'm curious. Because a Cause used know... camera, if you know who you're buying it from, then it's fine. Like, if you know what it's been through. Mm-hmm. That lens flare is so annoying. Go Photoshop that out. Is the guy sitting on your side your boyfriend? <laughs> yes. He is. I am. <clears throat> Who would have thunk it? Just an observation that most of your photos are center aligned. Do you move autofocus points around or just the center or upper points? Um, I always move my focus point around to be the closest to my model's eyes or face. <laughs> didn't sound like I was yeah <laughs> full stop did you answer the question I think I did it's 35 millimeter life yes <laughs> <laughs> it's my life it's my running gun I love that combination 35 and a 5d Julia do you use reflector no I don't I mean, sometimes, depending yeah, on, yeah. like, what I want it to look like. But for, like, a simple portrait photo shoot like this, I kind of use natural reflectors that are out in the world. So, like, we're shooting against this tree, but behind us, there was, like, a really big white building that the sun was, like, hitting on. <laughs> the sun was hitting on the building. Um, yeah, well, so that was causing, <laughs> like, a natural reflection onto the model. I'm like such a hand talker. Well, I never realized until we started like filming YouTube videos and I was like, <laughs> wow, I move my hands so much. <laughs> Dan, how did you get started with video? I worked in audio and then it just sort of progressed. <laughs> Next to video. <laughs> Jordan Soy, get to the point. No one Shortest wants to hear a long story. life story ever. I've been doing video for nearly as long as you've been doing photo though. Yeah. yeah. I've probably got you beat by like two, three years. Two, three years, yeah. I was still doing audio during that time. But yeah. What do we got? Speaking of focus points, do you use just one or a group of them? Just one. I hate the grouping focus point thing. Yeah, the EOS you know, 1B you know has the know. group focus point, and I'm like, what does this mean? <laughs> Which one are you focusing on? I send my photographs to your email for your emails. 
Okay, so I think you're talking about the critique um, email address. So basically, I get like so many, like hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of people have sent through their images to be critiqued, and it's going to be an ongoing series on my channel. I already have two videos critiquing your photos up, and I think we're going to do them like maybe once or twice a month mm. on Saturdays. So hopefully we can get around to critiquing as many of your photos as possible. It's going to take a while. Yeah. And yeah, we pick all the photos at random. And I also like to have a variety of different photos in each of the critique videos as well. But yeah. Have you shot some more film? <laughs> no. I, yeah, no, we haven't yet. But we will. I've been, I was thinking about it today. I was like, man, I really need to take it to another shoot. I have to. It was so much fun. I really want to get um, portrait film though and try yeah, that out that because just... yeah, we were using what was it? Agfa. Yeah, Agfa, and like I don't know, it wasn't like as sharp as I wanted it to be. Because well, Agfa is not that sharp at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, like we, we use not portrait Agfa film. two hundred and Agfa four hundred. We use when we're traveling for our travel photos and stuff. So like we've got photo albums of like photos for ourselves. Um. And Agfa's got really pretty colours. The greens and the purples in Agfa are like the bomb. Yeah, so good. Especially if you're going somewhere. Because we shot on Agfa Yosemite. when we went to Yosemite. And the oh, photos yeah. are like, oh, so pretty. So the colours are amazing, but the green is quite thick and splotchy. There's how many sharp photos I get in a shoot, by good the way. Good work, Jules. Wow. So professional. <laughs> and then like, bang. <laughs> The lighting at this shoot was just amazing. I'm obsessed. Okay, let's read some. Read some out loud and I'll answer. Um, thank you for inspiring me. I know I've said it before, but every time I see one of your videos, I feel like I'm grabbing my camera and making a photo shoot. So it's not a question. Just a big thank you. Yay! That makes me really happy to hear. I love it. You know what? Like, I get messages and, like, comments from you guys all the time saying that, like, my videos or my photos inspired you to pick up a camera again after not touching it for, like, X amount of years or months. Or you were just feeling, like, uninspired and then watching something that we made inspired you to go out and do a photo shoot. And that, like, makes it so worth it for me to, like, continue making videos for you guys. And it makes me... Because, like, even sometimes we feel like, oh... Like, I don't know, sometimes you lose a bit of motivation every once in a while. And then I remember, like, all these amazing and lovely things that you guys say, and I'm like, no, let's go make something amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, thank you as well. More questions? Yes. Um, what's your thoughts on the 24 to 70 2.8 GM? That'd be the Master Series Sony. I haven't tried don't, it. I haven't used it. Don't use Zoom. We will, though. We'll get around to it. Um, I remember you said you don't use a lens hood. Are they just annoying or do you lose them? <laughs> I actually don't know where any of them are, No, to be you honest. just lose them on the day that you got you buy a lens. Except for the 35. That one's been laying around. It yeah. keeps rolling around the office. Um, I find that, like... The majority of the time I like capturing lens flares in my photos and for the very rare time that I don't need a lens flare to be in it, I just use my hand as the lens hood for like a couple of shots that I don't need a lens flare um, instead of having to like ruin the flow of something and like go to my camera bag and like put the lens hood on and get back to like what we were shooting. So yeah. <laughs> Also, I am so obsessed with these portraits right here. I love like the lighting and the awkward framing and stuff. I'm like so happy. Let me keep reading. Yes, please. All right. Look. What's the easiest and best editing software for Windows? I'd Lightroom say Mac. yeah, Lightroom is good. Camera Raw in Bridge is good as well. Mm -hmm. If you don't like making catalogs. I feel like Camera Raw is a bit faster than Lightroom 2. Was there any reflector for these portraits? No, no reflector. But I was using our location as a natural reflector, as I was mentioning before. So I would place my model where there's nice backlight and also where there was like a big building or something reflecting light back onto her, which is what creates that really nice like light. 
What's your opinion on the ADD? I haven't used it either. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've only used the 5D Mark 4 and 3. And 2. And 1. I promise I'm gonna get around to using more lenses and more bodies soon. I just need like someone to send me them. <laughs> Canon, are you on my live stream? <laughs> can you send me some camera bodies so I can make videos for these nice people? And that's the thing, we've got enough cameras laying around that we sort of most of the time don't want another camera. Sort of I always want more cameras. <laughs> No, but in terms of like what, like the the complication of what do you take to a shoot when most of the time we'll simply chuck you'll chuck a f Mark Three or a Mark Four into your bag in a thirty five and call yeah. it a day. Yeah, I usually bring like my Mark Four and thirty five, and then I bring one extra lens like just in case, and I never use it. That's why no, as in that's why we don't buy like crop sensor cameras and stuff like that. It's because mm -hmm. they wouldn't get used. Yeah. I'm going to just move on to this outfit. We'll go back to the blue one later. Later, later, alligator. Try the Sony RX1. It has only 35mm. I'm hmm. pretty sure that's the 35 F2. But... Yeah. Might get around to it. We will get around to it. We'll get around to everything. I'm waiting to see what Sony release in October because there should be a new A6000 or 7000 series coming out. Oh yeah, out, you were talking about that sensor. earlier. So there'll be some more crop sensor stuff happening. So you might end up shooting some, do some shoots on a crop sensored Sony, mm -hmm. which is sort of like shooting crop sensored Canon because you'd still use Canon lenses. Yeah. Um, I'm using a 5D2 and 50mm 1.4, but my images are too contrasty. What should I do to avoid that? Um, you might want to look at your picture profile settings. Maybe you've got like the contrast bumped up in the picture profile. I usually use like just standard picture profile um, because I like to have a boring as much as possible image to work on later on in post. Well, the 5D2 though was more contrasty than the 5D3. Images in a 5D3 look way flatter than on a 5D2. Mm -hmm. But um, just bump down the contrast in post. Mm -hmm. the, the sensor itself, that camera itself, was more contrasty, was yeah. more punchy. Well, yeah, bump down the contrast and also bring up the, uh, the blacks and shadows. That should help as well. Mm. When you're, yeah, and shoot in RAW so you can do all those edits. Uh -huh. My only prime is a 51.2. What should be my next purchase? 35 or 85? I'm so torn. The 35 gang over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, my favorite lens that I use like 90% of the time is a 35. But it really depends on, yeah, like what you shoot and what you like shooting. <laughs> That's the same thing, I just said it twice. <laughs> Yeah, I guess like the 35 is good for me because I like getting kind of like weirder portraits that show more of like the environment that I'm in. And I also like to use 35 when I'm traveling and I use the 35 so much for weddings as well. Whereas the 85 is more if you do kind of like headshots and if you like more like traditional portraits almost. I don't know. I really like the distortion in the 35. These images that you're looking at on the screen are all taken on the 35, by the way. Would you switch to mirrorless if Canon released a full frame mirrorless camera? Um, yeah, I would, but it would have to be like the same quality as what I'm using at the moment, if not better. It has to have two card slots. Like there's a lot of things that it needs to be for me to be able to switch. And I feel like like, they might not get it straight away, but I feel like eventually I would. I would love well, to. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm like, when I shoot a wedding, the weight of the 5D Mark IVs, especially because I have two on my shoulders all day, is ridiculous. And I get, like, neck pain and back pain. And, yes, I would love to have a mirrorless no, that's system. the thing. Have a mirrorless. Have it weather sealed. Have it with a good battery life. Mm -hmm. Dual card slots. And work with L-series prime lenses. How much weight can you shave off and can you create something that's as good as the current flagship or 
prosumer body. Yeah. That's... For a cheaper price, because there are less, less moving parts, so price should usually be cheaper than DSLR as well. I would pay more to have something lighter though. But technically it falls in the lower range. Yeah. So yeah, I would definitely move, but yeah, I would have to get a lot of things right for me to, to move over. Don't you shoot with Sony as well? Yeah, I do. I have the Sony a7 III and I use that to get um, like natural light photos during a wedding reception. I feel like we need some music next time. Come back in a second. Also, well, it's cooking in here. I know, I love it because I was really <laughs> cold before. Have you ever tried Nikon? Um, yeah, I have, but a really long time ago when I used to work at a studio, like a headshot kind of studio, the photographer I worked with used a Nikon. So I would borrow his camera to do shoots every once in a while, like for the studio. Um, but that's pretty much the only time I've ever used Nikon. I've got nothing against it, but it's kind of like when you invest in one like system, you're kind of not going to invest in like any others because it does cost so much money to get bodies, lenses, accessories, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, nothing against Nikon. I think they're great. I think they're great. Marry him and make your own wedding photo shoot. <laughs> Who does the housework at home? We both do. Can you zoom, zoom in to the eye to see how sharp they are? <laughs> that took me a while to read. Let me go back to like a portrait. I guess this one. Whoa. I also shoot in Emerald, so you can't like zoom in as much. Pretty sharp. Hey, what was I up to? What were you up to? Here, somewhere. What did I miss out? What focus mode do you use for moving subjects? I use one shot all the time. I don't like using servo modes because I don't like cameras to do things for me <laughs> so yeah I just do one shot I was up to the full body shots now I remember nice. who does the housework I already answered me I'm joking <laughs> we both do This model was so good. She moved around like she tried like so many different things. I love it. Have you tried Capture One for raw editing? No, I haven't. <laughs> so many people keep telling me about Capture One, but I just haven't gotten around to trying it, but I would like to. Is it cold in Australia or something? I don't know how this stuff works. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we're in the Southern Hemisphere, it's opposite to whatever's not in the Southern Hemisphere. Which is... The majority of the rest of the planet. Yeah, so it's winter here at the moment. So yeah, it's pretty cold. I mean, it's not that cold. <laughs> I just like to complain. It's a pretty bland winter. It's, it's just super dry. It's 15 degrees outside. Celsius. It's just winter. <laughs> like it's over. winter and we're in drought. Realize that in comparison to a few other photographers, your photos are rather bright. Aren't you concerned about losing details in the background? Mm, I don't really want a picture to be like perfect. And I actually tend to underexpose quite a lot too. I guess this shoot is quite overexposed. Not overexposed, it's like correctly exposed. Normally I under by like one or two stops. Mm -hmm. But I don't really want like HDR looking images where you can see everything in the background and everything in the foreground. So yeah, I kind of like it when some things are a little bit more overexposed in the back. It like, yeah, makes it look more real. Been watching you go through the photos on your screen and you have a lot. What are the three or four main things the picture must have so you can say this is the one? It needs that's to be... That's a good question. I know, that's kind of... Four things. Four, three or four things. Yeah, well, so it needs go. to be sharp. I mean, is that a bit of a... <laughs> 
I mean, yeah, that's the main thing yeah, I'm looking for. Sharp. First thing you're looking for, yeah. The next thing I'm looking for is a connection in the eyes from the model. Like, I need it to be, like, to capture me, like, when you look at it. Because I feel like the eyes are the most important part of a portrait. Um, the next thing I look for is the shape of the model. Like, um, like what pose she's doing. Like, how, like, this photo that's up here, for example. I love how her body is just, like, standing straight. But then she's got all these cool shapes going on with her arms and her head tilting and stuff. I feel like it's a really interesting picture. And then the last thing I look at is the background. Um, <clears throat> I think it was up here somewhere. Where was it? Yeah, it was here. So if you look at these two images I selected this one there goes my voice <clears throat> one second oh yeah Can you make one? yeah make one in a minute thank you it's 15 in the north of England and it's summer here's the thing F what? 15 in Europe compared to 15 in Australia not the same 15 it I doesn't mean, feel the same Last time we were in Poland in the summer, I was dressing like it was winter in Australia. Yeah, but then you've got days where it's 30 in Europe and it is actually ridiculously hot. While yeah. in Australia, we'll be here in plus 40, 42, 45, and it's still like manageable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. It's Do you different. know what I mean? I wonder like why it's, it's Depending different. on where you are, humidity, elevation, like altitude, like it makes a difference. Yeah. Anyway, it's not all same thing. back to the last thing that I look for when I'm selecting a picture. So the last thing, point number four, is the background. So when I was looking at these images, I was going to select this one at first. I had one start it until I saw this next picture and I was like, wait, no. And I got rid of the one star from this one and gave it to the other one. So here, I feel like the background, especially to her left side, yeah, her left side where we're looking at is more distracting because it's so bright and white so it like really takes your eye away from the model whereas you go to this photo that i've covered the white up with her body just by moving my like angle a little bit and she stands out so much more in the picture so yeah those are my four things that i look at wow that was a tangent hopefully that was helpful I <laughs> love that you guys actually think that it's winter. Come hang one, Kevin Aw, Evie. The Polaroid Stealer. Um, selecting. <clears throat> if you could have only one of your presets, which would it be? Currently. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I have like two answers. <laughs> I'm like, well, well. <laughs> I'm assuming I can you get got me. I reckon I can get some, right? Okay. I reckon it's the wedding collection. Yeah. 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 Because I was like, since, oh, Evie. <laughs> Evie. Yeah, I'd say the wedding collection is the most important one for me. Evie. The closer shots are very compelling. Yeah, she was like, I don't know, she was amazing. I love, like, the close-up portraits that we got of her. Calm down. Huh? 
Where did the cat go? She's sitting like right underneath the camera, so you can't really see her. I'm sure you'll see her tail in it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Do you use macro lens for weddings? No, I don't. I don't own a macro lens actually. The only macro shot I really need to do on a <laughs> on a wedding day is getting photos of like the rings and the earrings and stuff like that. Um, but I use my thirty five millimeter, which I use for everything. But it um it yeah it gets really good macro shots. I just crop them in a little bit more afterwards in Lightroom, but it gets really nice, clear, crisp photos. And then in the Mark II version of the thirty five, you can shoot even a little bit more closer up too. So yeah. I think it's like less than 30 centimeters or something. Yeah. That's good. And I kind of like, I set up my ring and earring shots and stuff in a, um... They get the followers. Maybe. In like a kind of scene. So like I put the earrings in a tree or I put the rings on some nice moss or something that's on the ground. So you don't exactly need like the most macro shot uh yeah <laughs> how bad is the first 35 compared to the mark 2 it's not yeah i kind of prefer the mark 1 to be honest i okay i love the sharpness of the mark 2 35 it is like ridiculously sharp and then when you pair it with the mark 4 it is like beyond the sharpest combination of camera lens i've ever seen um, but the lens flare, it drives me insane and I waste so much time like retouching the lens flare out of portraits and stuff that it just, yeah, I kind of miss There's also the Mark One. a little bit of undescribable magic in the Mark One, in my opinion. Yeah, there really is. It It's like, it almost has like a film kind of vibe to it, hmm. like if that makes sense. Pretty cat. <laughs> She's also very naughty. <laughs> She's writing a story on a typewriter right now. <laughs> oh, like yeah, for the past like two weeks, she's been obsessed with the with the typewriter. Obsessed. What was that? Do you use emerald? Yeah, I do. I do. I don't need gigantic uh, raw files because I don't really print my work or anything. Evie. Evie. Why do you use emerald? Um. Mm. <laughs> Boop. She's not impressed. She's Why? not getting attention right now. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> She stole a picture of herself. Very nice. Good job. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. I use Emerald because I don't need like the bigger files since I don't print my work. Um, if I were to print or if I was shooting a campaign that could possibly be printed out, I would shoot in RAW. But for these kind of like portrait shoots and stuff like that, I just shoot in Emerald um, because it saves them space and I don't really need anything bigger. And your buff is quicker. Oh yeah, and the buff is quicker. You should do a lens hood challenge shoot uh, for a week with the lens hood. I can't read because she's <laughs> sitting in front of the chat. Uh, so you don't have to edit out the lens flare. Well, that's the thing. With the 35, the lens hood is so uh, short that it doesn't do anything. Thirty-five. Really it's wide really frustrating. I shot a wedding uh, with the lens hood on the 35 the whole day and there were still crazy lens flares in the shot seriously that i had to play on the 35 with or without lens hood no difference yeah it really makes a difference on other lenses though like 50 85 135 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's great but yeah i don't know the, especially that 35 yeah, it's just on like the 85 or the 135 huge difference yeah and like the 85 you don't want to actually put a lens hood on it most of the time because it just looks better with that flare. Mm -hmm. Like, 
35 1.2 is just you want it for that flat yeah definitely well the 35 just gets a bit mushy with that lens hood if it's like broad daylight backlit like mm-hmm. it's too much signing off i hope to connect with you online in tokyo australia soon thank you so much bye thank you so bye. much for joining <clears throat> we will definitely come to tokyo soon 100 percent Dan, what's the camera cage you have because I have the new small rig one for the Sony A7R 3 with the grip but I don't like it that it doesn't have a bottom plate to put the camera on, it's screw on. Huh. Um, I've got a Tilda cage which takes um, A7S Mark 1s and 2s in it. Um, with the bottom plate I just have adapters that switches it back to the standard Manfrotto um, plate that I use for everything else. Um, which you should be able to just to, to, well, with a grip. Yeah. Um, otherwise, yeah, I use Tilda. Again, the, the plate that that comes with is not correct to all of my tripods, so I just don't use it and have a different plate on it. That answers the question. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, which trend in photography on Instagram do you see currently that annoys you or just stands out as really short lived one? Um, this is a bit of a diplomatic answer, but I kind of feel like if you kind of if you want to follow the trends and you should follow them and if you don't then that's fine as well i feel like you should just shoot like whatever makes you happy really mm-hmm. and some people like to shoot you know what's popular at the moment because why not yeah it's like an idea and it's like well I may as well try it if it gets you out of the house it gives you a reason to shoot yeah then you go and create something mm-hmm. go do it yeah 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 <laughs> Come to Utah. We have beautiful and amazing sceneries here. I can take you guys. We're actually, we would we're, love to. I don't know if we are. Oh, because... Evie. God. We might be. We're driving through Utah. Yeah. We still have to plan our itinerary. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I would love to go to... I think it's called Monument, Monument Valley. Monument Valley. I was wondering, what do you do with these types of photos slash portraits? How do you make money with them? There's lots of different ways that you can make money from portrait photography. So a couple of examples are you could get hired by a modeling agency to take portraits of models to put in their book. They need like really simple, like clean photos of their models, usually without makeup, such as this photo shoot. You could also get hired by... um, Freelance models who also want to build up their portfolio, you could get hired uh, to shoot uh, senior portraits, which is a big thing in America. We don't do that in Australia, but I wish we did because that would be so much fun. (laughs) I would love to do that. Um, You could also get booked by actors and actresses who need headshots or photos for their portfolio as well. So yeah, there's like heaps of different um, ways that you can make money from, from portraits. This is for a model's portfolio. Would you ever shoot uh, double exposure portraits? Yeah, Dan and I uh, used to shoot quite a lot when we were like traveling and stuff around Australia. We'd like take double exposures of each other, which was really fun. Um, But yeah, I've been meaning to do it at a fashion shoot and I just never have. So maybe at the next photo shoot, I'm going to have to try. What are you trying? Double exposure portrait. Uh, In camera or? Yeah. In the camera. In the camera. When was the last time we did double exposure in camera? Ah, oh, that picture of you with yellow flowers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we were in the truck. Where was that? Oh, somewhere in New South Wales. Somewhere. Should we put no? Uh, ba- Barima. Oh, baby hair. The oh, canola gosh. fields? No. No? It wasn't the canola fields. Hmm.
I just bought the 35 mil 1.4 because you inspired me. Yay! That's so exciting. Have you like done a shoot with it yet? Do you like it? Do you see why it's my favorite lens? The trend of pouring food or drink on the model. <laughs> There's a trend? <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen that before. No, I haven't. <laughs> I'm going to look for it's this. It's not trending here. Is there like a hashtag or something on Instagram <laughs> so I can see? Have you ever been to London? Yeah, I have. We shot a job in London for a hair salon, which was so much fun. And yeah, and then we got to explore London and it was amazing. I love London. Mm. Really want to go back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to Scotland next year, which is exciting. So maybe we should drop by London. It's just really expensive for us Australians. <laughs> the pound? Yeah, it's like uh, like double the price for us, right? I don't know what it is now. I'm pretty sure it's like double. Well, I don't know, because the euro was double, which means the pound would have possibly changed recently. Ah, it was really bad at one point. I remember we were going to swing past England and then... Yeah, we were like, oh, was maybe not. <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember which year it was that we were going to swing past. I'm pretty sure it's still in double. And it was bad. Did you try medium format? No, I haven't, but I would like to. Uh, do you believe in replacing your shutter if you've accumulated a high shutter count? Um, for me personally, I would just get a new camera, but that's up to you. Well, it depends how fast you got through the camera. Say you buy a Mark IV and you... You know, you knock off 400,000 actuations in a year, yeah. and it's only a year old, then changing the shutter makes sense. How? Okay, wait. But what would you need to do to shoot 400,000? Sport photography. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're knocking off 50 in a row every time. Bang, bang, bang. Hmm. You come back with thousands. Yes, the 35 is epic. Now I know why you loved it so much. Do you still use it? Yes, I use it all the time. This whole photo shoot was taken on the 35. I haven't seen any of your portraits in black and white. Just curious why. I don't know. I think I, I like color too much. <laughs> so I don't do like black and whites. I used to do a lot of black and whites like back when I first started doing uh, like professional fashion photography. But yeah, I don't know. I don't really do it anymore. I really like color. Black and white in weddings a bit. Sorry? Black and white in weddings a bit. Yeah, I do a lot of black and white in weddings. Not a lot, like a bit. <laughs> like what Dan said. I'm just repeating you. <laughs> saying it wrong. Pounds a dollar seventy five by the way, right now. A dollar seventy five. has gone down a little bit. Oh, uh, so it's like... We, we spend a dollar seventy five. <laughs> one pound costs 1.75 Australian. Okay, it's so better... Nearly double. It's better than one pound being two dollars Australian, because mm -hmm. it's like if you have a fifty pound dinner, that's a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Hundred buckaroons. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Have you ever considered coming to China? We, <laughs> we were again. What? We've swung past China. Where was it? Sh uh, we were in Shanghai. I don't know. But I don't know, I was so sleep deprived that I don't remember. Yeah, we had a layover for 12 hours in, I think it was Shanghai. And we were like really, really planning on like going out and sightseeing because we're like 12 hours is a long time to sit at the airport. And we ended up falling asleep at the airport and we didn't do anything. We hadn't slept for like a day and a half though. So. But yeah. we really wanted to go out. We just didn't have the stress like it was the point where our legs wouldn't work anymore yeah i like warm. literally couldn't even keep my eyes open like doesn't matter how hard i tried oh i remember you following us we were sitting at a cafe and, <laughs> and that's like a big thing for me is i like don't fall asleep anywhere no like not even in the car actually the only other time i remember you falling asleep was again at an airport was at heathrow <gasps> yeah, that was also terrible. I also couldn't keep my eyes open then. Yeah, but we were awake all night long again. Yeah. <clears throat> Next time I'll go to Shanghai and catch you guys. <laughs> but I really would love to go to China. I want to go so many places. I want to go everywhere. 
I wish I could bring Evie with us because I always feel so bad like when we travel. She's just here. Mm -hmm. Not with us. Mm -hmm. But then she, yeah, when we come back home, she appreciates us so much. <laughs> She's like, yeah, bye. Russia, so nowadays yes. We just try to leave for like, we don't, we usually leave for like a week. If, if we're leaving for work, it's a seven, week. seven to 10 days at most. Yeah. And if it's for ourselves, then we do like two weeks. <laughs> but like, Leaving for three months with Evie, without Evie. That's sad. A bit hard. What would you be if you weren't a photographer? What a am photographer. I... <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind, like, something uh, to do with animals, like a vet or something. I don't know. That would be cool, though. Mm-hmm. What about you? Noise. Well, originally it was paramedic. I wanted to, but then I went in audio. And then video. Hey, Look at us now. Kind of v veterinary paramedic. <laughs> what? <laughs> I say weird things sometimes. Yes, I do. I really wish this photo was in focus. I'm so mad at myself. Why? Maybe I'll edit it black and white. You know when you can like get away with <laughs> like a really out of focus photo? Yeah, three percent. I'll see what I can uh, do in Lightroom. Three percent grain. Yeah, you just gotta like grain it up. Just add the black and white grain. <laughs> Good composition. <laughs> wow. Much wow. Take it your uh, focus point wasn't in the right spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about my selecting process. So basically, um, if you guys were around before, I look for like what's in focus and a good connection in the eyes from in the eyes from the model, because the eyes are the most important part of a portrait. And then also like the composition and the posing of the model too. So I basically one star without thinking too much, like one, yes, 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 no, yes, no, yes, no, whatever. And then once I have all the one stars selected, I move the zero stars to a separate folder. And then I go through that process again with the one stars. But this time You're I look ruthless. at, yeah, I'm ruthless. And I look at all the pictures that are similar and I pick out the best one out of that batch. Here I am talking with my hands again. I can't not do it. Um, yeah. And then... <laughs> can't remember what I was talking about. Yeah, and then... And After then, that, that's... Okay, wait, no, and, then, and then... And <laughs> then... So then that that's like the two star selection after that. And then I grab the two stars and have them in a folder only. And then? And then I pick out like my favorite 15 photos from the shoot that like summarize everything that we did in the best 15 photos. And those are the ones that I edit. Got it out and eventually. Then? Nothing. No that's one it. then. That's it. Are you no. Italian? Uh, no, I have some Italian like somewhere in my like distant family because my last name's Italian but um, my family's from Argentina what's up? nothing Definitely do you guys tea. thank you for the tea do you guys have anything planned for the weekend? talking <laughs> with your hands <laughs> What are your plans? I want to no, do something no fun, so I might steal one of your plans. <laughs> <laughs> now, tomorrow I'm going to go and see my family, and we're going to be making gnocchi from scratch, which is literally my favorite thing. Where do you go to camera and camera accessory shops in Sydney, or do you prefer to buy online? All right. Ah, oh, finish up here. Yeah, we go to Photoshop Studio for... Well, we go for, like, I, accessories and Yeah, stuff. bits and pieces. If we need something quick that we would usually buy online but don't have the time to wait, <gasps> wait we wait, go wait. to Photoshop Studio. Before I forget, don't get memory cards from Photoshop Studio. Yeah. I didn't realize how overpriced they are. For memory cards, you should go to M-Wave yeah. in Sydney. 
But for every other like kind of accessory, Photoshop Studio is good. About when we're in a hurry. Continue. Yeah, then we just go to Photoshop. Yeah, just yeah. So Photoshop Studio when we when we need like all the bits and pieces because Photoshop Studio is like eBay but in a shop. It's yeah, like off, yeah, it off, is. Off brand batteries, um, like all the cheap tripods, all that stuff. Like they got like more expensive stuff as well, but like they stock all the eBay bits and pieces, like all the good video shit. Um, and then bodies and lenses, it's pretty much always George's in Sydney, mm -hmm. just because Ryan works there and he's good, always helps us out, sorts us out. Yeah. And they go good warranty. Otherwise, JB Hi-Fi, if you can get a good deal, they do free extended warranty sometimes. I also used to go to Digital Camera Warehouse because they, let me tell you a little bit of a story. Because I don't know if you guys like, if there's any female photographers there or maybe you're a male photographer who's felt like this at a uh, camera store before. But yeah, so I used to get a lot of stuff from Digital Camera Warehouse in Sydney because they used to have like fairly cheap and competitive prices compared to everywhere else. And I noticed after visiting George's, everyone who works there is so nice and like talks to me and asks me questions and talks about gear and it's like really fun and like nice to be there. Um, so I didn't realize until after I went there and I noticed that at that store, I like you and me would walk in and, and you'd say hi and I'd say hi and, and they would exist. stare at Dan and say hello, ask him what he needs, what camera he's after and just ignores me. And I was like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. I was like, mm, that's very rude. I'm not coming here again. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you yeah, guys have happened. ever felt like that before, but the, I was just like, wow. Like, oh, I don't know, just like blatantly ignoring not, me. Didn't even say it's hello. It's rude. Like, yeah. f first and foremost, it's just bloody rude. Like, the assumption is, is that I'm walking in to get some, like, to buy something. Mm hmm even though I haven't walked up to anyone to ask them a question or anything. No, like, they're just saying hello. Yeah, they, just they, they won't come up to you to and me. ask you. They'll come up to me and ask, only ask me. Yeah. They'd ignore you. Yeah. So if you're going to ignore Jules, we're going to ignore this store. <laughs> Digital camera warehouse, in case anyone was wondering. Uh, yeah, on the other hand, George is like, has the best team working there like everyone's so nice and like we've been going there for like the last five or six years now so we stick with them they're good yeah judges are very nice and all the people that work there are awesome <laughs> awesome <laughs> <laughs> um okay so i asked you guys what you're getting up to on the weekend i have a wedding today drone shoot tomorrow going to an amusement park Work tomorrow, packing for Canada, off to see my family. Oh, have a fun time. Hey, that's an idea. We can go to Canada tomorrow. Can we? <laughs> well, just was saying like that she's going to steal someone's idea. So let's, I'm in for Canada. <laughs> Hoping to capture uh, a birth landscape after a big bushfire near my house. Ooh, Whoa. Is this the bushfires in California? Apparently, we've been having a lot of bushfires too. We have. Down south? South coast. Because it's like. And... Yeah. Even though it's winter in Australia at the moment, we've been having a drought in New South Wales. It's just been sunny, like non stop. I, like, aside from today, it finally rained. But before that. It was still rain for 10 minutes and it was like. Yeah, it didn't rain much. But. Anything. I think we didn't have rain for like two months or something. It was crazy. So yeah, we had a lot of bushfires as well. It's dry. Calling you Jules now. Yes, please do. <laughs> Everyone in my life calls me Jules. <laughs> no one said anything about the, <laughs> the, the, the camera store people. <clears throat> Doing a lakeside boho shoot tomorrow. Oh, that sounds fun. Have you tried Sigma Art Series? I really want to know your thoughts on color rendition of 35 and 85. Oh. I only Sim tried the 24. 1.4 which is a really nice lens like it's when it gets focused it's really sharp and the color rendition is beautiful but it does miss photos quite a lot we've tweaked it now miss focus i said photos <laughs> yeah we've tweaked it yeah. but, but i've like kind of lost trust know. in it but yeah i really want to get my hands on the sigma 35 and do a photo shoot on that and then also do a comparison photo shoot too it's just like we've got 
so many like things going on that like we need a little bit of time so yeah hopefully not enough hours in the day yeah Sigma 35 focus is bad. Oh, no. That's the thing. Like, Sigma's problem is quality control. Their, their lenses are good. The color rendition is good. They're tack sharp when they're in, when yeah. they get it. Yeah. So they've got a quality control issue as they're leaving production that should be addressed but isn't. So they're arriving to consumers and they're back focusing or front focusing instead of nailing. Yeah. So you're going to get the Sigma dark or you got to adjust Mine it in your focuses. camera body to compensate for the back focus. So we've got, yeah, we've got Mark threes adjusted for the back focus mm -hmm. to offset. So you got to calibrate it yourself. Then they're good. But it's a whole thing of having to go through that, having to constantly check up on them, make sure that they're not losing it more, all that shit. Mm -hmm. So, Good lenses, good glass, good quality, good colors. But you might end up with a crappy one or you might end up with a good one, but you don't know. Mm -hmm. Like I've had plenty of people, like plenty of photographers that we know that have bought a Sigma lens out of the box. It worked like crap. Sent it back. They sent him another one. And it that one still good. worked like crap. Oh. And then, yeah. Or then the, the second one. Like the, eventually. Yeah, they the second or the third one will work perfectly. Yeah. That's the focal length of the human eyes. Isn't it like close to 50? Yeah. I think it's like a 45-ish. It depends if you've got one eye open or closed. <laughs> uh, hi, Julia. Taya Ivy here. Oh, hi. Uh, who are your favorite photographers at the moment? Um, at the moment, I really like Matty Vogel's work. He does like live band photography and a lot of work for the Mars Volta. His photos are amazing. I also really like Rod Traverne. Traverne? I don't know how to pronounce it. But he does really amazing landscape photos and he also rescues and helps a lot of dogs, <laughs> which I love. And another one that I really love at the moment, her name is Anne Street Studio on Instagram. And my friend Christina, who I shoot with a lot, showed her work to me. And I've been obsessed. She does like these beautiful, like still life. Uh, like natural light photos with like fruit and flowers and like all these different things and I really enjoy watching her stories because she shares like how she creates these photos so yeah I've been really loving those people's work at the moment sorry I'm late to the conversation that's the photoshop are they only in Australia I'm in the US yeah I'm pretty sure it's like a one-off like store what? the photoshop studio photoshop studio yeah yeah it's just a one-off store unfortunately in sydney julia have you heard the nikon z6 and 7 uh what are your thoughts about it yeah we were talking about this earlier on the live stream it's really exciting that they're releasing a mirrorless camera because this will hopefully um like push other brands to do better <laughs> aka canon and also push Sony as well to be even better so they're not taken over at their own game. But yeah, I don't know. The specs are good on the on the 6 and 7, but the whole uh, one card slot is a real bummer, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I feel like, I don't know. Anyone who's a professional isn't going to get the 6 and 7 because we have the technology to back up your photos instantly while you're shooting them, so... Why would you ever go back to not being able to do that? We were having a solid one hour conversation about this earlier. Yeah, yeah, we were like the whole car ride. Didn't why see. would you? Why? Like, why? Because like Nikon's current slogan is reinventing mirrorless, right? So they're going to, they're using that. I'm sipping they're, tea. They're using that this is as. Perfect. <laughs> they're using reinventing mirrorless as their slogan, but they haven't delivered any feature that isn't already in either Sony's, Panasonic's, Fuji, or Olympus's mirrorless range. There's not a single feature in Z6 or Z7 mm -mm. that hasn't already been... that isn't a feature in another camera. So, what's reinvented? What's their definition of reinventing mirrorless? Like, in my, like my problem is, is 
Pick a new slogan. Pick a new slogan or actually give us something different. Like, because there's not one thing. Like, even, like, 4K, 30 frames per second, um, full HD at 60, it's a full frame camera, 600 and something um, focus points. So, like, you put in 40 something megapixel, 46, I think. So, you're looking at it's an A7R Mark III, like, pretty much the same thing. Except that you get one card slot. And you pay way more, and you I have know. to start off with. It's silly. You don't have the same amount of lenses that, for instance, Sony already has. And that, that was the other thing. Like the one thing that fired me up the most about um, about Nikon. Z mount is reinvented according to them. Yeah, so th- <laughs> this is where I'm getting at. So so they're going that like. Good night. They're releasing Z mount. Um, it's gonna take them a while to catch up. And so they're releasing a, a 28, a, like in the next three years or something, there's, supp- there's supposed to be X amount of lenses, right? Mm. But they've made it that if Sigma, Tamron, anyone want to create lenses for the Z mount, they're not actually giving them the specs of it. They're keeping it proprietary. And Sigma or Tamron or any other third party lens manufacturer, they're going to have to reverse engineer and the electronics and work it out. Car. So lenses are always going to be slower from third-party manufacturers compared to Sony, who just gave the exact specifications of FE mount to all third-party groups, so Sigma, Tamron, everyone, Mm -hmm. and and went, yeah, make all the lenses you want. So Sony now, what, we've got 29 or 30 Sony lenses, and then we've got Samyang, Sigma, Tamron, um, Fujinon's making them, like everyone's making lenses. So Sony's already up past, you know, somewhere between 50 to 100 lenses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's like no well, shortage of options. Yeah, well, Nikon's much. aiming for like 20 lenses by 2020 or something. So we're going to wait like two or three years. <laughs> wait, someone said you look like a similar version of Zlatan. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when people say that. It's so funny. <laughs> I seem to get that all the time. Yeah. I'll take it as a compliment. <laughs> it's now midnight. Oh my gosh. 12 a.m. Oh. Oh, <laughs> it's time to go to bed. <laughs> um, advice for starting a YouTube channel, YouTube videos. Um, just start. Yeah, just start. I, my gosh, when I was going to start my YouTube channel, I was thinking about it for more than a year. Literally, I was thinking about it and I never like did anything about it I was like oh I wish I had stuff to upload I wish I could be interesting enough to like like make videos I wish like there was something I could make videos about and um yeah eventually I think me and my sister were traveling to America and we took the Sony RX 100 Mark 3 Mark 4 with us and we were, we were like, oh, let's just document our trip. Like, maybe I'll upload it, but, like, mostly just for ourselves. And, um, yeah, so we started filming and, like, vlogging our <laughs> trip and, like, what we did and stuff. And from there, I realized, I was like, hey, it's not actually that hard to, like, talk to the camera and to possibly make these videos. So, yeah, we, like, slowly built up from there. And here we are today. So yeah, I would just just start. Even if you're filming something on your phone or whatever camera you have, just try to to make something, make and upload something. Yeah. That sums it up. Yeah, just start, do it. Don't put it off. Don't think whether you can or you can't. Just do it. Can you read my last question, Dan? I uh, yeah, millimeter I've, is I've... twenty-seven millimeters. Looking up. Yeah. <laughs> A bunch of... I've That's missed. a lot wider than I thought. Oh, I guess because, like, you can see in your, in your peripherals, peripheral but, like, I don't the, count that as, like, my yeah, vision. Yeah, but, like, That's the weird. center of your vision is close to a 50. Yeah. Like, the part that you focus on. The in-focus part. Mm-hmm. I missed a bunch of questions. Uh, <laughs> la- catch la- up, la- yes. <laughs> lav mics and shotguns. Um, Rode make really good mics. I use Rode lav mics. Um, Sennheiser make good lab mics as well. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I like read your wrong one. Yeah, sorry. Continue. Final Cut Pro, I don't use it. I work on Windows. Jules works on Mac. Um, we both work in Premiere. Um, what else was there? Um, that's 
thoughts on Final Cut Pro? Yeah, I just answered. I oh, didn't use it. Sorry, it's midnight. I'm tired. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fading. Fading. Um, Do you have any marketing tips beside besides Instagram? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, have a good website that's like super clear about what you do and what you want to be hired for, whether it's wedding photography or uh, seniors portraits or fashion photography or actors headshots. Like, just make it super clear. Have like a concise amount of images, and then I feel like also having a blog is a good idea as well because you know Instagram, you kind of like. It's like a fun thing to look at, whereas a blog is what clients are looking at to see what you can deliver to them, if that makes sense. So on a blog, you can have more like complete photo shoots. So instead of uploading a one-off photo to Instagram, you can upload like a series of five or 10 photos from that photo shoot. (laughs) It's 9 a.m. where I am. Yeah, we keep going to say that we're gonna stream like during the day at some point but I feel like I always get so carried away with working that we forget and then it's like nighttime and we're like ah (laughs) we didn't stream during the day (laughs) raw vs jpeg I always shoot in raw even like personal shoots and stuff like that you two are so compatible um (laughs) what do you want since you have tried Sony SLRs, what's your recommendation? Best profile picture for skin tones. Um, I use standard profile picture. Standard picture profile. It makes no difference in all. Yeah, if you shouldn't roll the picture profiles don't really make a difference because those profiles are applied like to the raw image. So for example, if you've got a picture profile that's got added contrast, then when you open up the image in Lightroom, instead of your contrast slider being on zero, it's going to be on plus 25. So you can easily just put that to zero. Uh Yeah, it's us videographers that cause this conundrum. Yeah. (laughs) See, we shoot with picture profiles because we're not shooting raw. Mm -hmm. And so back in 5D Mark 2 days... um, when we were using 5D Mark IIs, every videographer was setting contrast down, sharpening off, because mm-hmm. it was screwing up the image of, you know, the 720 HD sh- shit, but amazing shit for back in the day. Um, so essentially we started creating picture profiles. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Mark III, mm-hmm. same thing, sharpening off. And then you've got, after that, like Pro Series cameras got S-Log, which was... Sony's version, but then C-Log came out, you've got Panasonic's version, now Nikon's doing N-Log. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be Z-Log. Z-Log, it, yeah, Z-Mac, <laughs> Z-Log. No, they missed out on that, N-Log. N-Log. Ew. Um, Ew. <laughs> so I think there's a 4 to 2 H, uh, 4K out on the, on the Z-Series um, mirrorless cameras. But, um, so it's our fault, because... For photographers, picture profiles don't actually matter at all. <laughs> yeah. I but it's, also, like the que- it's the question of every day. There everyone. was also a question that matched that answer. Oh, how do you know what white balance to use at different times and when to change mm. it? So for me, I like shooting at um, manual white balance and I normally have it set to 5200K. And I find that that white balance is really good, like nice in the middle for like something that's warm enough, but not too cold. And it just looks nice in the skin tones. Um, The only time I would change it is when I'm shooting indoors with tungsten, tungsten. I can never say that word. Can you say it for me? You said it. Tungsten? Or tungsten? Swallow the G. (laughs) Tungsten. Yeah. So I would change it if I'm shooting indoors like that with like tungsten light. (laughs) Or if I'm shooting, like, maybe, like, at dusk, kind of in the shade, you know, when you can get that really kind of blue lighting, then I would bring the white balance up. But if you're shooting in RAW, the white balance, again, like the picture profile, doesn't really matter, as you can change it in post without it, like, ruining or affecting the picture. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You've got all the white balances there. If you're shooting RAW, everything can be adjusted afterwards. Mm Mm-hmm. So if Dan usually JPEG, you have to be a bit more um, picky. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Dan usually laughs at me because sometimes, like, during, like, if I'm shooting indoors somewhere, I won't change my white balance on purpose. <laughs> and my pictures look like they've been sprinkled with Dorito dust. <laughs> um, yeah, just for like, why not? Yeah, I'll be selecting a wedding and it will be just like orange. orange. And I'm like, vibrant orange. You're going to change your white balance at some point? Yeah, I do in about an hour. <laughs> Thanks. So it's going to look at orange pictures. So yeah. well, like, but you can just you like can, move it yeah. back and it's fine. I feel like you do that on purpose sometimes, shits and giggles. I do. <laughs> it's Dang. fun. Uh, uh, uh. Hi from Hungary, Budapest. So good to see you guys in real time. Question. Do you have any legal document like school degree or something to do photography professionally in Australia? Uh, no, you don't need anything. You don't need a photography degree anywhere in the world to yeah. be a photographer. Mm -hmm. Having a business degree helps in my opinion. Yeah. I wish I did like a business study kind of thing would would have been handy for me. But yeah, other than that, like, no, you don't need anything. Have you got any Sony lenses for your Sony camera yet? No. We've, you forget. We've always, I have we've the Sony always 28. had the 28. But that's not like a portrait photography. Yeah, yeah. Like, not for me. But we do have it. <laughs> but yeah, I do have the Sony 28 F. Two, uh -huh. which I use when I'm vlogging, like when we're traveling and stuff. But yeah, I really, I think I'm gonna get the Sony thirty five. I mean that. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow, I'm so surprised. <laughs> I would have never thought. <laughs> wow. In France, you do need a degree in permission afterwards. Really? Huh. What kind of degree do you need? Like, what's yeah. the degree name? And who, wait, 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 and also... Where do, you, where do you get it? Where do you need to do? How long do you need to study? And who asks for these credentials? Yeah. I want to know. Because that's interesting. Yeah, actually, I want to know everything about it. That's, that's kind of, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because he, the only, like, documentation you need is for certain photo shoot locations. Like, you need to get a permit, but that's the amount. Oh, yeah, of... but that's something completely different. Yeah. And not, you... not in terms of run, running a photography business. You yeah. You don't need a... A photography degree is an art degree in Australia. So unless you're going to be teaching, you don't... Like, if you're a professional working photographer, mm -hmm. you're running a business, uh, the fact that you're a photographer doesn't actually matter, really. Mm -hmm. Like, that's part of your business, but you're actually just running a business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, you need to, like, register your business and stuff like that, but it's not a degree. I do you tend to underexpose or overexpose when you take photos or do you just get the exposure of the skin? Uh, I tend to underexpose typically. This photo shoot I was like kind of normally exposing for the skin, but I like to under to get as much I feel like you get more texture <laughs> in the skin if you underexpose slightly, which I really like for like close up portraits and stuff. And it's also really good to underexpose when you're shooting backlit as well to retain as much information in the background as possible. Apparently in Hungary you have to as well. Wow. That's so interesting. Tell us more. <laughs> Tell us everything. Tell us more. No, I'm really curious. Like, so how, if you're still listening, say you want to be a wedding photographer, right? Um, like, what do, you, what do you need to do? What do you need to be? Like... Mm. Do you need to go to uni? Do you need to like study? Do you need to? Is there like a course? Yeah. Do you do you have to pay? F like probably. Yeah, but as in like a uni degree sort of thing where you pay like you're going to school for three years and learning and stuff, or is it just like one of those courses where you're there for a week and you're just getting certified, so you have to pay one lump sum money and everyone gets it anyways? Like, get you know what I mean? Because yeah. there's, there's lots of ways. I just saw someone saying uh, "Good night from Manly." And Night Legends, hashtag Boo Digital Camera oh. Warehouse. Oh. Oh, you're amazing, Kellen. Thanks for listening to my story. <laughs> <laughs> Just that dumpy. How many finished photos do you deliver to your client? It depends. Uh, <laughs> spreading the word. Uh, digital Camera Warehouse, I'm going to be impressed if they hear about this. But I then you want to impress them, so. Exactly. And this is staying up on my YouTube channel. Oh, <laughs> tea. 
Um, how many finished photos do you deliver to your clients? So for a portrait session like this for a model's book, I would do like 10 to 15 photos. Um, and then for other things like weddings, it depends on how, like what package the couple decide to go with. So typically the more hours of coverage they go for, the more photos I deliver. So I send them anywhere between like 700 to a thousand images with each like package. Um, yeah, and then like stuff like lookbooks and campaigns and jobs, again, depends like how many looks you shoot, what photos they're after and stuff like that. So that's always something that I predetermine with whoever I'm shooting with before we do the shoot. Just so there's no like mix ups afterwards. Because I've been there before. <laughs> Good night, Slatan and Julia. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed this stream. <laughs> You have to have a photography degree to be registered as a photographer and you have to learn in u university for three years or a small course for one year. Wow, Damn. that's intense. Okay, so this was for Budapest, Hungary, Budapest and but is that, France. And that's for any sort of photography? So I guess that's in... So whether is that whether you want to be a portrait photographer, a wedding photographer, a commercial photographer? I'm assuming so. Journal, journalist, like it, for any... Like... So is it you can't charge if you don't have this degree? Is that is that the concept? Well, yeah, it? because to be registered as a photographer, you have to have a degree. So you, in order to charge someone, you need to be registered. Huh, that's crazy. I'm, I wonder if it's all of Europe that's like that. It's not like that in Australia, and I don't think it's like that in the United States, no. as far as I know. Not like that and in it's South not America like that either. In all of Europe. Yeah, because I don't think in Poland it is. I don't think so either. Interesting. Hmm. Have you ever tried shooting film? Yeah, I have a photo shoot behind the scenes video on my channel with Christina, where we shot Christina. Um, <laughs> I just said that really. Sorry, who? Christina. Uh, we shot on the EOS 1V with Agfa 200 film, which is really fun. Definitely not like that in US, UK, South Africa, not China, nothing yet. Mm -hmm. What's that? Not like, not that, like in that in Germany. Germany. I'm pretty sure it's not like that in Poland either. I've yeah, I don't think it is either. And like, who in, who enforced that? That's the other thing. That's a I'm going to read about like, this tomorrow. So many really photographers work freelance, for instance. Not in Sweden. You can get a degree, but you don't need one. You can get a degree here as well. Yeah. You can, like, but... The degrees here, most of them really aren't worth anything, mm -hmm. and they're sort of pointless, in my personal opinion. The degrees. Well, in because Australia, you don't need one. Because you don't need like, one. So no one asks for it. Really. And the only thing that you can use it for is if you're going to teach. Yeah. So if you're well, going to be a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. But other than that. Correct, Zlatan. Or <laughs> Zlatan. <laughs> you kind of do. Look like you know. Hi Gustavo, I'm talking from Brazil. When will be the next next live? Next live. Um, when we don't forget. <laughs> yeah, I know. I really want to do it more often. We're supposed to. Well, original plan was to do it on Monday. Yeah. And then we remembered on Wednesday. <laughs> well, Yay, team! Good job. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I gotta find if I can make like a live stream schedule kind of thing so you guys can check on my channel when the next time will be live. Because we know about a week in advance. It's like when we plan it and when I start saying that on Twitter. like. Except for today. Book it in. Yeah, today we decided today. But, um... Yeah, I feel like we normally go live like on the weekends, Friday or Monday. So like a long weekend. And then I also I'm going to go live again, probably next week, just during the day uh, for some people in different time zones as well. Great job ignoring my questions. Good night. I'm sorry. We just we're getting a lot of messages. It's hard to um to read them when they keep popping up. Oh, good question. 
just uh, the G- Panasonic GH3 trying to decide between a Canon 5D and a Sony A7 III for both photos and video. Um, I feel like... S- A7S, uh, the A7 III. Yeah, There's I n- feel like Sony is better at... Uh, well, you- at first, Sony was a lot better at video, um, and now it's very good at photo as well, so I feel like it's a better combined system if you want photo and video. And if you're shooting GH3, you're already shooting mirrorless, so yeah, moving on moving to a DSLR. On to an A7 III, you're moving to a full frame mirrorless rather than moving to a DSLR. And the 5D3, the video on it isn't that great. Mm-hmm. And there's issues with the video on, on a 5D3. So yeah, you'd go to an A7 III. Yeah. Plus it's cheaper. Yeah, yeah. And you get a new camera. A7, the 5D3, you can't actually buy a new one, I don't think, anymore. Mm-hmm. Do you like or do astrophotography? I like it and we try to do it when we're like when we've got the the right situation. When, Usually when you... we're either camping uh-huh. at uh-huh. the <laughs> end of a wedding if we're in the middle of nowhere yeah. and there's a solid Milky Way to to photograph. Mm-hmm. It's like if the conditions are right. Yeah. And we got a tripod on hand and we can be bothered, we're not too tired and yeah. <laughs> but like it's something it, we enjoy it it's it's yeah it's a yeah hobby for it's us. fun to do might not be amazing at it but it's really fun can you show us some of the astrophotography sometime yeah maybe oh i'll find some and i'll post it on my story tomorrow hmm. what are you guys thinking hmm. about fiji fuji, fuji. <laughs> i was like fiji i love fiji <laughs> take me back <laughs> i got like such a good tan it was nice and hot. <laughs> Fuji. I want to go back. Fuji, not Fiji. <laughs> well, it's really funny. When I posted a photo from Fiji, I wrote in the and caption. And she continues. <laughs> no way. Look what you've done. A, it's going to come around full circle. I wrote in the caption, those perfect Fiji sunsets. And everyone in the comments was like, oh my God, I thought you said Fuji. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, uh what do you guys think about Fuji? <laughs> what do we think about Fuji? Uh, we have a... We have a... What's it called? I don't know. <laughs> Something. I forget. The little... The one I got for like documentary stuff. No, the X100. Yeah, the X100. I really liked it. It was a yeah. nice little camera. I got it for when we were like traveling just, and stuff. Yeah. Ages ago. Like when it came out. But, um, yeah, then the, uh, we've always got a full frame with us. Yeah. So we just don't end up using them, I think is the problem. Yeah. They're good cameras. Yeah, they are And good Fuji cameras. makes some amazing cameras now. Mm-hmm. And they're killing it in their department. We should do some, like, videos with Fuji. Yeah. That would be fun. I just need to get some Fuji cameras. What is most difficult when photographing a person? Uh, I feel like when I first started doing like portrait photography, for me it was really hard to like get someone to be natural in front of the camera. Um, but yeah, after like a bunch of years of doing photography, you slowly learn like what to say and little things to do and stuff like that to get someone to feel more comfortable. But yeah, when I first started, I felt that was like the hardest thing for me to do. Especially because I was, like, really, really shy and, like, awkward and stuff. I'm still quite shy and awkward, but nowhere near as much as when I first started, like, 10 years ago. I feel like making YouTube videos has really helped with my confidence, actually. And my speaking. (laughs) My speaking. Lens for Fuji, the price is way too high for an APS-C camera. Yeah, like, that's the other thing. Yeah. Fuji, Fuji stuff is pretty expensive for what it is. Mm-hmm. But still, you get a form factor with Fuji. It is small. There is, it has an application. Mm-hmm. There's a fair amount of wedding photographers that switch to Fuji because it's light. Yeah. But they're guys that don't shoot wide open or with a lot of depth of field and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've got more of, like, a documentary style. Yeah. If you're shooting sharp and you don't mind, you know, f2.8 that sort of thing then it's all good like fuji works Mm -hmm. sorry if i'm really loud all of a sudden actually 
I'll move away. Practically on the microphone. Hello. <laughs> Hola, Julia. Saludos. Hi. Are you from? Where are you from? Have I medium format? Um, I haven't shot medium format before, but I'd like to do it. <laughs> full frame, mate. Full frame for the left. <laughs> yeah, I do like full frame. What lenses do you think I should take for my first wedding shoot? I have a 50 mil prime. Uh, when the 50 mil 1.4 was my only lens, and I had to second shoot a wedding with another photographer, I think I hired the 24 to 70 2.8. Argentina, and you live in New York. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, I hired the 24 to 70 because it was like I was first starting out in photography, so I wanted to try a few different lenses. The 24 to 70 is um, a really high quality lens. The only thing is that it's 2.8, so if you're doing a lot of like dark indoor stuff, it might not be so great. In that case, I would probably say a 35 1.4 because that's a good like all rounder lens that you can capture a lot of stuff with. In Czech Republic, as I know you don't have to have a degree, but if you want to be paid, you have to register business and pay taxes. Yeah, well, that's the same as Australia. Yeah. So, that, so my, most of the world is the same as here. Yeah. You register a yeah. business, you're running a business, 90% of what you do is just you're running a business, 10% is photography. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, I'm, so I'm going to write that down because yeah. I really want to read about that tomorrow. Hungary and friends. <laughs> it was furs all over my friend. Yeah, if anyone missed it, well, someone mentioned in France and in Hungary you need a degree to to work as a photographer, which is really interesting. So we're going to be doing some research tomorrow just, just for the sake of it because we're curious. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, yeah, I, I prefer... Um, sorry, I'll read out the thing. I see that you don't use soft boxes or big lights. For me, I prefer to shoot with natural light because I love the way that looks and that's the style of photography that I've built for my business. So that's what people come to me for and that's what they hire me for. In saying that, I did used to shoot a lot of stuff in the studio with big lights and stuff like that. Um, mostly kind of e-commerce work for boutiques. So you'd shoot like the full body outfits, front, side, back of each outfit. Um, but yeah, aside from that, I just don't enjoy it as much as I do being outside and working with the sun. <laughs> I like being in the sun. It's more fun to control the environment outside to control the sun outside yeah it yeah because a lot of photographers forget that you, you can control the sun mm -hmm. you control the lighting outside just just as much if not more than inside mm -hmm. inside it's easier because you can just flip a switch turn a knob on and you're good to go mm -hmm. outside you gotta work for it yeah your location doesn't always make it easy for you mm -hmm. that's the fun part of it yeah work your butt off make it work agreed I love how you interact with your clients. Thank you. When is the next critique of photography, photographs, wow, by viewers? Um, hopefully in a couple of weeks. I think next week I'm going to do an, on Saturday, an editing video with Christina's last photo shoot, like how I edit golden hours, golden hour photo, golden hours. Golden hour photos in Lightroom. Golden minutes, mate. And then the Saturday after then I'll do the critique photo. But yeah, I'm thinking of doing it like once or twice a month on Saturdays, the critiques. What if it was bad weather? What's your definition of bad weather? Oh, thanks, Daniel. That's really nice. Yeah, it, so if it's like raining and stuff, then umbrellas. I'll try to, yeah, use umbrellas or try and find undercover locations or reschedule the shoot for another day. Or just shoot in the rain as well. We've done plenty of photo mm -hmm. shoots in the rain. They're actually really fun. You can get some really beautiful portraits in mm -hmm. the rain. Yeah, you still shoot? Yeah. I mean, I do anyway. <laughs> Hello. Question for you and guest Dan. 
Lately, I've seen Which YouTube is. videos. Or Zlatan, as some people like to call him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to stop. Right, guys, um, gonna continue <laughs> Lately, I've seen YouTube videos talking pros of shooting portraits with 35mm lens. Not seeing the benefit and prefer 55 or 70 to 200. What are your thoughts? So the 35mm is my favorite lens to shoot on. This entire photo shoot that we went through in the live stream was on the 35 and I think it provides like such an interesting focal length for a portrait because for me personally, I love taking portraits on my 85 and my 50 mil and stuff like that. They're really beautiful photos, but sometimes I don't want my images to look that perfect. So I love the distortion that the 35 creates. It's just enough to make it photo interesting, but not too much that it really distorts someone's face. And it also um, includes like a lot more of the environment in the shot as well. Fun fact, <laughs> you're currently viewing us through a 35, 1.4. <gasps> That's bum, bum, meta. Bum. Oh, through my 35, no less. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I do use a 5D Mark IV. Yeah, the image you can see of us, that's a A7 III with a Canon 35 1.4 Mark II on it. Yeah. My first photo shoot with my, was my friend's couples and it was raining. Yeah, you know what? The first wedding I ever shot was boring rain. Yeah, same. Yeah. Yay for the rain team. Yeah, it rains. Yeah, I think, you know what, I think it's cool because it's like throwing you in the deep end, like straight away. Some of my favourite shots and favourite weddings, it was pissing down rain all day mm -hmm. long. Like oh, you've got I'll some, show you guys something. Like we've got some night portraits that we've done over the years and the nighttime ones. I love it raining, when it rains at night. And you just, you run a triggered flash. It's insane. Is it on autofocus? No, yeah, but I can make it. Uh, Lighting. No. <laughs> I can't be bothered. <laughs> it's on my Instagram. It's like the only wedding photo I have on my uh, on my Instagram. Can you post a picture to the live chat? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Bugger. Do I need to do it? Uh, so that was anticlimactic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> How old are you guys? I'm 27. I'm still 20 something, I think. <laughs> Leave it at that. I just had my first wedding as a second shooter two weeks ago and it was awesome. I loved it. Yay, that's so good. Actually, I should see how you use it. Yeah, the first couple of weddings that I did were as a second shooter and I love being the second shooter because I feel like you get to um, like take a lot of photos without, you know, having the stress of being the main photographer and having to like direct the couple and doing all that stuff. So yeah, being the second shooter is really fun and you get to be like extra creative too. I'm jumping from Canon to Sony. Nikon dropped the ball on mirrorless, and I think Canon will too. Shaking my head. Wait, is that what SMH is? Shaking my head. I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I kind of agree. Like the specs on the Nikon camera are pretty good, but the whole like one card slot. And I was hearing some stuff in some reviews about the autofocus being a bit funny, and like they didn't even bother with eye autofocus. Like they might have face focus. I don't know. I just heard a lot of, like, watched a lot of mixed reviews videos of people not being that happy. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like for me personally, it was like kind of expected though, because Sony has been in the mirrorless industry for years now. So it is definitely going to take some time for Nikon and Canon to catch up. But yeah. I think I'm pretty happy with the photos we selected so far. I think tomorrow, um, no, tomorrow is Sunday. On Monday, I'm gonna go through and do like my final selection. We did a lot of like different looks and poses and stuff, so I'll probably edit like 20 photos from this shoot. 
And then there was that blue dress as well, which I still haven't selected. But I think some of my favorite photos, I really love some of these. It's so nice. And bake. Welcome back, Slatan. Oh. <laughs> keep on going. Yeah. Yeah, I think like these portraits, I think are some of my favorite from the shoot. What's going on? I think we're going to end the stream. So I'm fading. I'm going to pass out. <laughs> it's like 12.30. I try to go to bed at 11 p.m. So it's an hour and a half past my bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> what? Fading. <laughs> the best thing was that I got to use the photos I took at the wedding. And that's really unusual here. Yeah, no, that's really good that you got to use the photos because a lot of the photo um, photographers that you second shoot for prefer, like, for you not to share the photos sometimes. I think it just depends on the photographer. Oh, so it is. I love how Dan goes with you and captures the behind the scenes. It helps us. That's um, my job. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, it's been, I love making behind the scene videos and videos in general. Like, I love it so much. I enjoy it. Yeah. It's really fun. I feel like it adds, like, such an exciting... Exciting? Exciting. I was going to say exciting, like, zest to the week. Because <laughs> it's like there's always yeah, something like, different yeah, going like, on with video. What, what, what new thing are we... Like, what new project are we starting this week? And mm -hmm. Every week it's something different. Yeah. No week is the same anymore. No. No, every week is, like, entirely different. Which is good. Mm -hmm. Ever been interested in shooting videos? Me? No. I love taking photos. Dan's the video man. You are. <laughs> Alright, guys. I think we are going to go... But thank you so much for joining in on the live stream. I had so much fun, like, hanging out with you guys. and. Same talking and yeah sorry if we missed any questions yeah i'm sorry we get a lot a of lot stuff and we've been beaten <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think next time we'll try and stream like during the day yeah let's let's aim for like middle of the day yeah we'll give it Except a go then you know it's gonna turn into a bloody eight hour live stream <laughs> <laughs> day to net you guys are great. Love your videos. Keep up the good work from Iowa, USA. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Getting the last word in. <laughs> Canon Color Science is way better than Sony Color Science. Just saying. Thank you for answering questions. Yeah, I really want to do more live streams. I love them so much. Sometimes we just like get too carried away with like work and doing shoots and stuff, but yeah, I need to make more time to stream. Thanks to Julia and cameraman. <laughs> That's my name most of the time. <laughs> All right, you guys, see you later. Good night, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Take it easy and have a good day. Yay, bye. Enjoy your weekend. Yeah, have fun. Are.